Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escoffier Online and today we're going to be doing a segment on tea flavored desserts and I have a super nice lady here that's going to be helping us out. Her name is Sheila Duda from Tea Lula and she's a tea specialist. Thanks for joining us today, Sheila. Thanks for having me. And we're going to be going over some desserts that I made that are infused with tea. But first, Sheila's going to tell us a little bit about when people actually started drinking tea. Well, tea goes back about 5,000 years. It began in China. Uh, but recently in the United States, we've seen a huge resurgence in tea going back about 10 years now. And it's growing leaps and bounds every year. So I'm really excited to see that tea is now becoming very, very popular in the United States especially. Thanks, Sheila. Well, our first dessert is going to be um, a chai panna cotta. And I use the panna cotta recipe, which you're going to find in the recipe database of the program. It's under the resource section on the right-hand side of your screen. And if you're not in baking and pastry, just let me know if you need the recipe. I'll send it over to you. You can reach me at bpmontours.com. So back to the chai panna cotta. What I did is I took some chai tea. I made a real strong um, infusion of the chai tea and I replaced some of the milk in the recipe with the chai. It's something that you can do to taste if you like it a little stronger, that's okay. Put in a little bit, bit extra. So as you make these things, you'll become familiar with your own flavor palette and how you actually like things. And also, when you're warming up your milk, go ahead and put a couple cinnamon sticks in there too and let that steep in and it's just going to enhance that flavor. So I took the panna cotta mixture, I molded it and um, I've unmolded it. You can see how beautiful it looks and I'm just serving it with some fresh mango and some raspberry mango sauce and a little bit of blueberry and I made a white chocolate decoration. I just piped a grid in. I put some cinnamon sugar on it while the chocolate was still in the melted stage and it stuck really good. And I was able to just lean this on my dessert. So Sheila's gonna tell us a little bit about chai tea. So here we have some masala chai and masala just means mixed spice and chai means tea. So masala chai just means spiced tea. There are different types of chais, um, very popular. Um, they came from India and they have just the most wonderful flavors. Some of them are a little heavier in cardamom and then clove. There's cinnamon, ginger, pepper. Sometimes there's fennel. So you need to know when you're going to be using a, a chai for cooking what some of the dominant flavors are. So I would recommend tasting the tea first and knowing if this particular chai that you have is heavier in cardamom and how will that affect your dessert or is it really heavy in ginger or clove. And then you can buy certain chais based on um, different flavor profiles that you're looking for. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful tea to use in, uh, in a lot of baked goods. I agree. Thanks, Sheila. Our next dessert is going to be a Earl Grey chocolate dessert. Earl Grey pairs super well with chocolate, so always keep that in mind if you're looking for a dessert to make with Earl Grey. You can't go wrong with chocolate. What I did here is I just made a small gateau cake. I used the flourless chocolate cake from the assignment. It's also in the recipe database, and actually any flourless chocolate cake recipe will work. And when I made some simple syrup, I used some Earl Grey tea in my simple syrup, and I brushed the cake with the syrup to kind of reinforce the flavor because I use the Earl Grey in the ganache too. So I've got the Earl Grey in two components of the dessert and I've just served this on a plate with some raspberry sauce and I took a little bit of the ganache and I did some piping. That's a beautiful way to dress up any of your plated desserts. Pipe a little ganache on the side of the plate. Get the contrast, especially on the white plate, it's really nice. So Sheila's gonna tell us a little bit about Earl Grey tea. Well, Earl Grey, it becomes Earl Grey because of the oil of bergamot. That's what gives it that classic Earl Grey flavor. There's different amounts of bergamot in, in different Earl Greys. So again, like the masala chai, you'd want to brew up the Earl Grey first and taste it. Um, you might have heard of a tea called Lady Grey, which is an Earl Grey with added citrus to it, which is going to temper down the bergamot oil and give it a little lighter flavor. Then there's like the Earl Grey I'm showing here has some lavender, so you get a slight floral afternote to it. So again, you want to make sure that you taste them first. If you really want that flavor of Earl Grey or that, that um, bergamot oil to come out in your dessert, then you'd want a very strong um, Earl Grey. So again, the, the most important thing I think is just to taste them and find out how they will complement. I would actually recommend using 
a pretty potent Earl Grey blend for with the chocolate, so it really balances and comes out, and you can and you can taste the that flavor through the chocolate. Wonderful, Sheila. Thank you. Okay, for my next dessert, I made some cookies. I just used the Sable cookie recipe from the database, and I had a cute little fluted cutter that I um, used to cut these out, and it'll work fine. You're gonna um, you're gonna roll these out to probably about like an eighth of an inch. You don't want them too thin. And um, I just made some simple icing with some powdered sugar. And I actually used a tea blend that Sheila has in her store. It's a lavender and Earl Grey tea blend. And it's so beautiful. And I just made my icing with the, um, the tea. I made it a little bit stronger so it could kind of stand up to the sweetness of the flavor. And then I outlined the, um, the cookie and then I filled it in with the flood and then I let it set up and then you have a super nice cookie and the flavor is so beautiful. And what you can also do to reinforce the flavor of the cookie is you can take the tea and you can melt it in, you can melt the butter and put the tea in the butter and let it steep in and then you're gonna leave it sit and then you can strain it and then refrigerate your butter and then you have a nice infused butter to make your cookie dough with. And we have a question. Um, actually, there's two questions. When making these desserts, are we putting the tea raw-like in it, or are we brewing the tea and using the liquid? The question is using the teas um, in the dessert, if you're using it in the raw, like in the leaf form, or if you're actually brewing it and using the liquid. You're going to be brewing it and using the liquid. And um, maybe Sheila can tell us a little bit about the Earl Grey and Lavender blend, which she sells in her store. Yeah, it's just called Lavender Earl Grey. It's just, it's lovely. It's a strong bergamot flavor with some, just then a, a lavender goes a long way. So we just had a little lavender to it, and there's some orange peel in it as well. So that kind of tempers down the bergamot just a little bit. And then that flora note, floral note comes in as or sort of a back note or an after note. Um, I would recommend when you're brewing these teas, you'd want to, like Susie said, you want to brew them in a concentrate. We generally recommend two grams per six ounces of water, so I would double that for a, a baking application. Let it steep about three to five minutes, but don't increase the steep time thinking you're going to make your tea stronger for the dessert. Increase the amount of tea. Um, steeping the tea beyond five minutes, especially a black tea, will just bring out a bitter character that's just not going to um, make for a delicious dessert. So. Um, just make the tea stronger by adding more tea and then steeping it three to five minutes. Wonderful, Sheila. Thank you. That's a great tip. Be careful not to leave that tea steeping too long. Thanks so much. And we had another question. I believe she just answered it. How long is the tea steeped to, to use in a dessert? Okay. Very good. Well, our next dessert is a really cool dessert. And this is um, it's a pound cake that I made. And I made this white chocolate pound cake and then I swirled in um, some of the pound cake batter, which I flavored with the matcha powder, which um, the matcha powder is really interesting and it has some really good health benefits and it's made from the green tea plant. And Sheila's gonna tell you about matcha and green tea. Can I bring these over too? Mm -hmm. So here I have um, a matcha powder and I have a Japanese green tea. Um, in order to make this matcha, they, they shade just a couple weeks before the tea is harvested. They'll shade the tea plants with a, a canvas and to let you filter out some of the sun. So it takes a, it's a little harder for this tea to grow, which changes its, its chemistry and the flavor. And it gets this beautiful dark emerald green look. They take this uh, Japanese sencha and they put it in a granite grinder and they gently grind it into this talcum powder consistency. Now, when you use matcha, unlike other teas, when you brew them, you're drinking the liquor off the tea leaf. With matcha, you're actually drinking the entire leaf. So that's why it's like a real health benefit uh, powerhouse, because you're ingesting the whole leaf. Um, and, and you got like all the polyphenols, the antioxidants Wonderful. are all in this leaf, because you're, you're actually drinking the whole leaf. Um, used in recipes, it does have this beautiful green color and you do get a really nice flavor from it. This is one where you can actually just add it as an ingredient into your, um, into your baked goods. What's important to know about matcha is there are several different grades. Ceremonial matcha can often sell, for, which is used in the Japanese tea ceremony, can often sell for a dollar or more a gram. 
and that's like a tiny little scoop of it. So you wouldn't want to use a very expensive matcha in your baked goods. So I would go more for an ingredient matcha. Um, it's not going to be the highest quality. It will have a little bitter flavor if you just brew it to drink a cup of it, but it's perfect um, added with other ingredients. Wonderful. Thank you, Sheila. And this bread recipe I'm going to be putting on the blog post today, and I highly recommend trying it. It smelled wonderful when I was baking it. And we have another question. Um, somebody wants to know, are there specialty stores where pea sampling can be purchased, which might be a good time to tell you about Sheila's story. <laughs> The question is, is are there specialty stores where teas and sampling can be purchased? And that's exactly the kind of store that Sheila has. So I'm going to let Sheila tell you about her store. And she also has some other blends that she'd like to show you. And she has some really popular blends in her store. And I know that personally because I go there all the time and I have a lot of favorites there. And she also sells some infusers, which are perfect for making particular types of teas. So I'm going to let Sheila tell you about some of the wonderful things that she has to offer. So our tea, we, and our tea shop is called Tea Lula. We're just outside of Chicago. And we specialize in loose leaf tea. What's important to know is like tea can be very aromatic, but often those aromas don't translate into the cup. So it's very important that you always try to sample a tea before you purchase it. A lot of tea merchants um, don't do that. Often you just get like the aroma of the tea, but if you can request a sample, that is the best way to choose whether or not you want to purchase that tea. Often, um, for instance, oolongs, they're very tightly twisted uh, leaf, don't always present a lot of aroma in the tin or however you can smell it in the, in the retail store. You want that to be brewed so then you can really, the water releases all those wonderful aromatic qualities. Some people have different palates. So for mm -hmm. instance, um, Chinese black teas can be very smooth with a slight smoky note, whereas Ceylon teas can have like a bright astringency. And some people love that astringent um, feel in their mouth, and others don't like that earthy quality of the Chinese teas. So that's why tasting the teas is so, so important whenever you can. We, um, we opened our store in 2008, and we have a, a very lovely tasting bar, and we will sample every tea we have on our shelf, which is about 150, so you need to plan your time. Um, want me to show these? Yeah. Sheila has some great blends that she brought with. So I wanted to show, if you're Back to put the little map here first. Perfect. Loose leaf teas come from about, um, and we're, we're talking about specialty loose leaf teas that, are, that we purchase in like small batches from um, very specific gardens around the world. So India, China, Japan, Taiwan, um, Kenya are all wonderful places to get loose leaf teas. And just from this little sampler, you can see that how different um, the, tea qual the teas are. For instance, this is a very large um, tea. You can see how the leaves are quite big. And this really makes how you infuse this tea a very important thing. We often laugh in our store that we'll do an infuser intervention if you try to put a large tea like this into a tiny tea ball. Um, these loose leaf teas, that they need room to expand in the water. So choosing the right infuser for the tea leaf is very important. And this is a beautiful tea from China. It's silver needles. This is just the bud of the tea plant. When we're talking about loose leaf teas, we're always talking about the two leaves and the bud. And when you look at a silver needle, it is just the bud of the tea plant. And these are usually quite expensive, but a very light, smooth, delicate flavor. They do look beautiful. So they're all different from all different countries. And each country, because of their elevation, their soil, the climate, um, the amount of rainfall, all of that's going to affect the flavors of the tea. So there's just a whole world to explore when it comes to tea flavors. Wonderful, Sheila. Well, thanks for joining us today. And please, everyone, visit Sheila at tlula.com. Check out her store. You'll learn so many things. And she has some really great things that you can purchase, even though you don't live in the area, you can order them online. And then you have Sheila there, too, to help you out with anything. And we have a question. There's three questions. So we'll start with, can tea be steeped in any other liquid besides water? The question is, can teas be steeped in any other liquid besides water? What do you think, Sheila? I think I would need to know, um, if you're steeping in another liquid, what the temperature of that liquid would be to release the flavors of um, these teas. Like, for instance, a black tea, to really get the flavor out, you need to have the water at a boil. For an oolong, you need to have the water about you know, three minutes off the boil. So 
I think it would depend. Like, um, like I'm thinking, like maybe an uh, cider. Right. You might. My only um, reservation about brewing in something other than water would be you. You're not going to be able to taste what the tea is trying to give you. It, you'll mask it or you'll change it in some way. That makes perfect sense. And if you have a particular tea that you're thinking about steeping in another liquid, just contact us and we can give you some advice on that. And we have another question. Can chamomile, chamomile? chamomile? Yeah, tea be used to flavor? The question is, can chamomile tea be used to flavor? Um, that's a great question. Chamomile is actually not a tea. Um, the teas that we showed today in, the, in these desserts all come from the plant called the Camilla sinensis. Chamomile is a separate plant found in Egypt and in um, Croatia. Um, it has a very strong floral note, it has really great medicinal qualities, and it does work very well um, in a lot of recipes. It's just a, it's a flower, it's like a little yellow flower. Um, it falls apart a lot, so mm -hmm. to, in order to brew that, you want to make sure that you brew it in some kind of a tea sack so that you don't get those little particles because it would make for a grainy taste in a dessert if it was kind of added to it. But definitely would be great for desserts. Yeah, definitely. A nice flavor, mm -hmm. definitely. And we have another question. Um, tea was used in the ganache. How? The question is, is the tea was used in the ganache, and how did I use the tea in the ganache? Later on today when I do the blog post and I post the recipe for the white chocolate and matcha pound cake, I'll post the ganache recipe. And what I did is I just, um, I substituted some little bit stronger Earl Grey tea, which I steeped in water, for some of the cream in the recipe. And it worked out beautiful. And what's nice too is it's reinforcing the Earl Grey tea flavor that I added um, by brushing the flourless chocolate cake in the center with the syrup. So it's super nice flavor. And um, once again, like I said, Earl Grey tea pairs very well with chocolate. Highly recommend it. If you like chocolate and Earl Grey tea, you can't go wrong. And we're getting ready to wrap up. And if anyone has any more questions, just let us know. And we have another question. Um, are you adding water to the butter when melted? And I have another question after that. OK. The question is, is are you adding water to the butter when melted? No, I was just going to put the, the tea leaves right in the butter. And then we have another question. What seasonings go well with tea? The question is, what three things go well with tea? And it, no. What seasonings? What uh, seasonings? You season your tea. What seasonings go well with tea? OK, sorry. The question is, is what seasonings go well with tea? And I think it would really depend on what tea you're using. Right. I think um, often you can, like cinnamon, all the spices we mm -hmm. mentioned in the chai, cinnamon, clove, cardamom, go very well. Definitely. Um, sugar. Mm -hmm. I know it's not a seasoning, but sugar. Honey mm -hmm. um, are also pair very well with tea. And um, lemon, too. Lemon. Yeah. Oh, even fennel, saffron mm -hmm. are all great with tea. Very neat. And Sheila, did you have some flavored teas in your store? I mean, some flavored honeys in your store? We, um, we do. We have a variety of honeys. We have wildflower. We have a, a winter white honey, which is going soon because the season's about to end. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do when we pair tea with honey is it has to be a balance. So for instance, if you drink a first flush Darjeeling, which can mm -hmm. be very astringent, just a little dollop of honey will cut that astringency. Very so nice. for me, it's about how do you balance a stronger, like buckwheat might mm -hmm. be too heavy for a lighter tea. You may want to use that in a, in a stronger full body tea, like a Yunin or a Kimen. Very neat. So on Sheila's website, too, you can explore different types of honeys mm -hmm. as well as teas, too. Keep in mind that honeys do have different flavors, not just one flavor. And we have another question. Two questions. Um, I have chocolate mint in the garden that I make tea out of. What recipes would you suggest for this? The question is, is um, someone's growing chocolate mint in their garden that, that they're making tea out of, and what recipes would be good? I would say with chocolate and mint, you can't 
go wrong with any type of chocolate dessert. And ice creams are really nice and gelatos for making teas and perfect for like chai and the green tea. And also that chocolate mint would be really nice for that too. And even you could do, um, use your ice creams and you could make a really nice baked Alaska too. And did you have any thoughts on that, Sheila? They, the, no, those all sounded okay, perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> well, if there aren't any more questions, we're gonna, oh, we have another <laughs> question. I'll let you go that easily. Um, <laughs> any health benefits of tea? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the question is, are there any health benefits of tea? And yes. There are so many, but what you, when the news comes out with all these new health benefits of tea, you, you kind of need to take them with a grain of salt. A couple years ago, I attended the fifth annual scientific t symposium on tea and health in, in Washington, DC. And there's so much research going on around tea and health. Um, the studies are all pointing to a very healthy, positive direction. Correlating one type of tea, a green tea or a white tea, for very specific disease prevention is kind of a, a reach. Mm -hmm. But what I think is like when, when we recommend to people to eat all like the rainbow of fruits and vegetables, I think you should drink the rainbow of teas, your green, your oolong, your black, your white teas. Because each, when they, when they manufacture the tea and the chemistry in the leaf changes going from a green tea to an oolong to a black, um, that changes the health benefits that are available. So I think to get the power punch of health benefits, it's really good just to drink the rainbow of teas and you, you're really getting different types of antioxidants and polyphenols um, from drinking all of them. But yes, the health benefits are, are great, yes. but I just think that we need to, it's not going to be the magic bullet that I know a lot of people hope for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and keep in mind when um, Sheila mentioned the matcha because it's actually the leaf that's ground up, so it's like maximum. Right, benefits. that's maximum. Yeah. Very good. And we have another question. Does the caffeine in tea transfer to the desserts? The question is, is does the caffeine in the tea transfer to the to the desserts, it definitely does. What do you think, Sheila? I know, um, well, I, I've often heard that when you bake something, mm -hmm. it kind of will bake it out. Oh. But um, with green, like with the um, panna cotta and like matcha mm -hmm. ice cream, you're going to have, um, especially if you're using matcha, which has all the caffeine the leaf has to offer, you will get some caffeine in that. Definitely keep that in mind. And do we have any more questions before we say our goodbyes and we thank Sheila for coming? Well, um, no, that's okay, very good. Keep in mind that you can reach me on the bpmentors.com or the toll-free line, 877-452-5489 if you have any questions. And you can reach Sheila at tlula.com. Check out our website, super cool store. And let's all thank Sheila for coming today. Thanks, Sheila, thank for coming. My it was pleasure. really nice. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. And thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.